This video is sponsored by Squarespace. So historically when planning for a film or commercial project, I like to storyboard it ahead of time. I like to get all the shots, you know, make a shot list and then put those into boards so anyone can see the visual representation of what we're about to shoot. I've done this with paper, I've done this on my iPad. For my last short film, I storyboarded almost every single shot on my iPad. And here's the deal, the, the shots don't look that good. I'm not the best artist when it comes to hand-drawn things, but it's a very long process that really isn't that great. But recently I was listening to The Good Podcast hosted by Christian Schultz and Jared Hogan. They're filmmakers just like me trying to make movies. And I'll go into VR and I'll like start storyboarding in VR. Um, which just you like- You to teach me how to do that by the way. And Christian Schultz started talking about how he used like an Oculus Quest 2, a VR headset, to storyboard in real time in a 3D space. And this really had me intrigued. So he sort of outlined how to do it, but I found that there wasn't a lot of information online. So I wanted to make this video to help other people do this themselves. So the first thing you're gonna need to do this are some sort of phone that has a LiDAR system on it, not just a regular camera. So I'm using my iPhone 13 Pro. And then you download some sort of um, LiDAR scanning app like Polycam. So ideally you would take a phone into a location that you're going to film at, scan the whole room. Now you can get closer or farther away from your subjects to get a better uh, resolution or detail on the subject. For, for me, I feel like just a quick scan is good enough for storyboarding, but you can do it however you want. Once the scan is complete, you process it, and then you want to export out what's called an OBJ file. Okay, hi, it's Spencer from the future now, Spencer in the edit, and it turns out you don't have to do this whole step that I already shot and added to the video where you have to actually add this OBJ file to Blender. They've updated the app, you no longer have to do that. So what we're gonna do here, instead of exporting an OBJ file, you're gonna wanna export one of those GLB files right below the OBJ file option on Polycam, and then you can import that right into the storyboard software. So going forward, if you hear me talk about Blender, just ignore that because originally that's how you had to do it. Okay. So let's get back to the storyboarding in VR. So once you've exported that OBJ file from your phone, you're gonna to want to transfer it to your computer. And after you download that, you're gonna to wanna to download Storyboarder, which is the app that's going to allow us to create these storyboards um, digitally and then be able to access them inside the Oculus Quest, inside the VR headset. So we're gonna download that as well. I've already downloaded both of these. We can open up Storyboarder. We're gonna create a new storyboard, create a blank one. For this purpose, I'm gonna do 16 by nine. So this is the storyboarding software and it's designed for you to take these like drawing tools and draw out your storyboards and import things like that. And then it'll create storyboards down here on a timeline. But for what we're, our purposes here, we're actually gonna go into the shot generator over here. The shot generator is where the VR and objects come into play. So we're gonna open that, it's gonna open up this other window. We already have this camera placed here and you can change the focal length of the camera, which is really fun. So this 3D space here, it's 2D currently, um, is the point of view of the camera. So if we moved, it would just be moving the camera left or right. You can change the lens here, you know, up or down. You can go like elevate up or down. You can roll the camera, pan the camera. But up here, we also have options to add like a character. So you could add a character to the scene and manipulate this character or a light to the scene. And you know, you can do things with the light, but it's more fun if we do all this in a VR space where we can actually jump in there, block out a scene with characters, find our focal links. And it's just a lot, much more like an intuitive way of storyboarding, just like you would do basically on set, but you don't have to be on set. The real purpose of this would be, maybe you have a DP somewhere else, or maybe you're the DP and the director somewhere else and the location somewhere else. Well, someone can scan that location and then they can build it inside the software and then anyone can jump into that location and block out a scene. An actor could be there as well if you wanted to. And they don't even have to have a VR headset to do this. They can just interact with the platform as is like this, but the VR headset makes it much, much more more fun. So we're going to insert our object. So we're gonna to go to add object. It automatically kind of makes just a, a box, but you can see your box one properties. We're gonna to go to this little icon here, select file, come down to our um, export that we did. We called it office scan GLB, open that up, boom. Now our character is kind of locked inside this right now. Uh, the next thing we're gonna do is we're going to 
Come back over here. Dropped object to floor just to make sure it's on the floor. It usually lands right on the floor. It's usually not an issue. But then I'm going to lock it because if you don't lock it when you're in there and trying to move stuff around, you might move the room around and that just gets really annoying. Okay, so the next step is basically how do we get into this now um, inside the room using the Oculus Quest. So you can kind of zoom out here with the camera and see that's our room. It just looks like a purple box right now, but you could zoom into it using the software here. Yep. Kind of pan, see around. Now you can make these scans better than I did. This is just for testing purposes, but you can get, the closer you get with your phone, um, and the more detailed you get, these scans can look better. And I think there's even an option inside the app to export even higher res. If you really want that, I think for the purpose of this and just storyboarding, you don't need it to be that, you know, high res, um, but you can, you can make it more, I believe. That's our light over here. Okay, so you can select the light and move it around. But let's do all this in the VR space. So next we're gonna go to open in VR up here. And then it's gonna give you this link at the bottom here. So this link is what we need to type into our browser on the Oculus Quest 2, and then it will turn into a virtual space within our browser. So let's uh, put on the headset and do that now. Okay, but before we jump into the headset, I wanna talk about today's sponsor, which is Squarespace. Now, Squarespace is an all-in-one platform to present your work online. If you're anything like me, you, as a cinematographer or filmmaker, you need to put yourself online, and a website's the best place to do that. And Squarespace makes it super easy. You can start building a website with one of their pre-existing templates, or you can build it completely from scratch however you want. But they have great tools on there to you know, make a store if you want to, or you can embed any videos you want to, or photos, and really set it up however you want. And that's what's really nice about Squarespace is the customizable options to really present yourself how you want to be presented to your clients or other filmmakers that you want to connect with. And they just have the tools to allow you to do that. So if you're looking to build a website anytime soon, you can just do that with Squarespace. Click the link in the description to get 10% off. And I want to thank Squarespace for sponsoring this video. So we're going to want to, once we get into our VR space here, we're going to want to uh, open up our browser. So I already had like an old one loaded up here. So you're gonna have to go in and manually type in the link. We're just gonna change the back couple letters here. And so that's just going to connect basically to like a web app of the storyboarding software. Now I'm sitting down right now. That's probably gonna throw everything off. We're about to find out. We're gonna enter the VR. So it turns out when I dropped it to the floor, it didn't perfectly align it. Um, so that's unfortunate. Let me fix that real quick. I'm actually gonna unlock this and reset it. And this is something you can do too. I'm just gonna, you can just literally just take one of the triggers, top triggers, grab the whole space lift it up until the floor is on where you want it basically and then I'm going to come back out here real quick to the computer okay so then here is your 3d space and I'm just using the joysticks here just to move left and right for now but you could also walk right in here if you had enough space in your you know, wherever you're doing the VR at. And so I've already placed the character in here before I jumped in here just to make things easier, but you could do this inside here if you want. You simply come over to um, your right joystick here and then you can just add something. You can add a camera, an object, person, or a light. And then over here is your storyboard. Right here is your storyboard icon. So I'm sitting in my chair here, so I'm kind of sitting down a little bit lower. Uh, but if I stood up, you would be able to see that I can walk around if I want. So if we come in here, you can come up to this camera and move the camera wherever you want. Using the joystick, you can spin it left to right, move it out and in, which is pretty fun. So let's just take our character over here, move our character maybe in a spot that kind of makes sense for a shot, maybe behind the desk here. You can drop the character there. And now we're gonna take our camera, spin it around in front of us. Maybe kind of like a slow, similar shot to what I was doing in the opening of this video maybe here. 
Place that there. Let's see, it's kind of moving this out a little more. It's pretty simple. So like, if you wanted to add another character that could be talking, you know, let's come over here, add another character. This person can be, um, you know, you can change all these settings on your character. Maybe you want it to be, uh, you know, an adult female this time instead. So it's like a female and a man having a conversation here. Like that, you can even do grab your camera then and come over here and do like an over the shoulder shot. We can change our focal length right now. 45 is kind of wide. Let's do a Roger Deakins 27 millimeter. How about that? 28, good enough. <laughs> Doesn't like that this camera's like in the wall. So I'm gonna grab it from over here. So we can call this shot one, for instance. And like I said, you can do a lot with these characters. They have like little pivot points on them. You can make them move up and down. You just gotta get really close to them in order to do that. Like say, maybe you wanna can grab the bottom, the bottom of your trigger here, the bottom trigger, and then you can Anyways, you get the point there. So back to our camera. Got our first shot there. So if we, what we want to do is use this shot for, say we this is shot one, we come over here, click the storyboard. Now here's the camera. We don't really have any boards here, so let's do a insert as new board. So this is shot generator has unsaved changes. Basically what that means is that the shot VR world hasn't really caught up with your computer yet, I believe. So this is behind. Maybe sometimes you have to wait a second before you create the shot. Um, I don't know how quickly that can happen, but if I just do save to board, it does the same thing. So I'm gonna insert as new board. Now it did populate here, which is good, which means it might've been populated on the computer as well. So you kind of get the point here, but you can walk around in this space. You can add a light to the space. We have this light over here that I have added and it's not like ray tracing. So it's not doing, per it's not ray tracing. So it's not doing perfect. Um, you can't like diffuse the light, but you can make the light like less intense or more intense. Like right now we have our ambient light set pretty high in our room. If we go into the computer, we can actually turn all that down and I'll show you that here in a second. And what that allows you to do is actually be able to see this light in this direction more. Right now, when I scanned the room, I had a lot of window light coming in through the room. If you did this like in a dark room, you'd be able to use these lights a little bit more accurately because there'd be less ambient fill light in the room and so you'd actually see what they're doing. But you can do a lot of adjustments with this. You can, um, let's see, we can make the intensity a lot lower or a lot brighter. We can change the angle of it, which is like the beam angle of your light the distance, like how far the light seems to be from the person, and then how, you know, this penumbra is like, kind of also its angle, like how wide it's going. So there are all things you can play with with these lights and you can set lights in the room. It's like you wanted to have a little, like maybe a table lamp, you can kind of illustrate that using that. It's pretty fun stuff. And you can act, you can add a lot of built-in objects here. There's some pretty wild ones if you wanted to get crazy. For some reason, this one just added a box, uh, but, we also have, like you can add a bed, you can add the most fun thing here to really just add, you know, add a car. <laughs> Maybe there's a car coming in through the ceiling and it's an action film. Well, you could get that all on camera like this. see the car actually coming through. Now I'm not gonna do a full tutorial of all of this. This is just the basics. It's kind of a thing that you can play around in and use however you want. But something I do think that would be interesting would be to, like right now I'm using a screen recorder 
inside my headset to record this entire interaction here. Well, I think it's something that you can maybe do in order to actually get video animatics of your story. So you could do, you know, 2D storyboards just like this and have that where you could share those digitally or whatever. But if you grab the camera and like use a joystick, like right now I could do a dolly move if I wanted to. I could push on the joystick. Actually, let's get behind it. Let's grab the camera. Come over here. Like say we wanted to do a dolly move through this door frame. We could record, screen record, and then actually do the dolly move. Or you could do a push in by using the joystick like this. Now I could record this and then throw this in the animatic and have the video, the actual video of what the camera's doing. It's not perfect. You'd have to crop in here and probably do something to play with it, but people could get an idea of what the camera's actually gonna do. Like we're gonna be here in the doorway. The camera's gonna move through the doorway. You can really show like a DP what they need to accomplish. Okay, so let's go back to the computer and see if we can see our storyboard. We're gonna take another shot here. And then once that's populated here, we're gonna go back to the computer and see the storyboards on the computer, something that we can share later. So then you can build a whole scene here. You could start with a wide, you can move to some over the shoulders or some close-ups, or you can do, you know, kind of a push in dolly move here. And then you can even fill in how long you want these to be. There's like a little dialogue box to put the dialogue there, the action. And so this, I'm not gonna break down the entire software, the storyboarding software. I just wanna show you how you can use VR to actually do the storyboarding. And I would love to see what you guys come up with inside this. Maybe there's a way of making a whole film in here and adding dialogue or something. I don't know, I just think it's a pretty fun way of experimenting with filmmaking. So if you do create anything in this, uh, show me, you know, tag me on Instagram or whatever, at Spencer Sakurai. And until next time guys, see ya.